How's it going, y'all? In today's video, we are talking cost of living in Boulder, Colorado. Nitty gritty, in the weeds, cost of living in Boulder, Colorado. Let's get after it. How's it going y'all? My name is Jesse Lynch. I run the hardest working real estate team in the business. We are called Welcome to Denver. Check out our website, welcome to denver.co. Anyways, this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home here in Denver, whether you are moving here from out of state or just buying a home for the first time. So if either of those two things appeal to you, do us both a favor, subscribe to this channel, click that little bell to get notified, give this video a thumbs up, and say what's up in the comments. I would appreciate that very, very much. It helps out, helps us be able to make a whole lot more of these videos, helps more people be able to see these videos. Today we are talking cost of living in Boulder, Colorado. Beautiful, beautiful Boulder, Colorado. Before we get into that, I just wanna say, if you're considering making a move here to the Denver or Boulder area, get a hold of us any way you can. You can go to our website, welcome to denver.co. You can call or text the number on the screen right here. It's also in the description and it's also at the very end of the video. Or you can shoot us an email at welcome to denver.co, .co as in Colorado, eh? get it, okay? Direct line to me, I promise you'll be getting hold of me and we will take the best care of you. Okay, I apologize for all the housekeeping. One last thing, these cost of living videos take a ton of research, a ton, a ton of time just to get ready, just to aggregate all this information. And then it takes a very long time for me to shoot. This is a very uh, chewy, very in-depth video to make. And then the edit takes a long time. I would appreciate it so much if right now you would click the thumbs up button. I would appreciate that. Okay, you have probably heard Boulder, Colorado is not exactly a cheap place to live. If you're looking for a budget-friendly place to retire or live financially independent, ah, Boulder, probably not gonna be the move for you. Specifically, according to niche.com, Boulder gets a C minus as far as affordability goes. That's one of the worst scores I've ever seen. I'm sure there's a couple within the country that are worse, but that's definitely pretty bad on the affordability uh, scale, according to niche.com. Whereas Colorado itself as a whole, which by the way includes Boulder, so Boulder's bumping that up a little bit, but Colorado as a whole is 21% higher than the average cost of living in the United States. So I would say Boulder to some degree is having a pretty sizable impact in that number, but nonetheless, Boulder is 67% more expensive than the average cost of living in the United States. What I find to be quite interesting is that overwhelmingly the thing that causes that is the cost of housing, right? Well, that's what we do, we do real estate, right? So for example, the cost of health, utilities, and transportation are all under the average price within the country. And their groceries and miscellaneous sections are only like six, seven, eight percent higher than the national average. So what makes it 67% higher? Housing in Boulder is more than three times more expensive than the average home price in the country, okay? Three times, that is pretty serious. On bestplaces.net, they use a score of 100 as the sort of median cost of living um, and specifically cost of housing across the country. That's a 100. And if you're above that by whatever percentage, you're below that by whatever percentage. Average is 100, Boulder is like 320. Okay, so 220%, actually a little over three times more expensive than the average housing cost in the country. And okay, look, I love it here. So I think it's worth it, right? If you can afford it, it is worth it. It's a beautiful place. It might be one of the most beautiful, proper cities in the whole country. But I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. We're gonna start with housing. That's the most expensive stuff. So if you can, I mean, hold on to your hat. Right. By the way, funny story, side story. Uh, one time I was on tour going through Appalachia. 
driving a van through Appalachia and I, it was very difficult to drive. It was in the mountains. It was at night. I got pulled over uh, and a cop told me to hold on to my hat because it was about to get worse. I wasn't wearing a hat, but nonetheless, hold on to your hat, y'all. Okay, according to Colorado Association of Realtors, who I would say is the absolute authority on, on this kind of thing, a year ago, in April of 2020, the median single family home price in Boulder was 586,000. This year, 860,000. Now, that is a staggering statistic. I mean, that's the craziest statistic that I've heard when doing anything like this. Certainly at this scale, right? It's one thing when you're going from 100,000 to 150,000. That's a pretty big jump. But when you're talking this big of a number, that's a whole different thing. That's pretty intense. But one thing that I sort of want to like entertain the idea of is that the median home price is brought up by the most extravagant home prices, right? And Boulder has no shortage of extravagant homes that are very, very, very expensive. And maybe this means anything to you, maybe not. But the average price not the median, the average price in Boulder is a million, okay? So that speaks definitely to the that high end. And while the median isn't affected quite as much, it is still affected, right? And look, maybe you're from the coast and you're like, I don't know, that's not that bad. And it's, dare I say, more beautiful here. All right, don't at me. But nonetheless, that's pretty intense. So if we go down a step, right, and we start talking about townhomes and condos, it's a little less insane. It's still pretty intense, but not as insane. And I think that to some degree helps illustrate those really extravagant homes are kind of what really pump that number up. And don't get me wrong, even on the low end, it's not cheap to get into Boulder, right? Like the cheapest houses in Boulder, not cheap compared to the national average at all. Okay, but in Boulder in April of 2021, the average cost of a townhome or a condo was 462 thousand dollars which was up 25 percent wow which is still a lot but not as insane as 46 percent but 25 percent in a year that's a lot for any market okay i digress a year ago in april 2020 the median cost of a townhome or a condo here in boulder was three hundred and seventy thousand dollars or again 25 percent down from what it is now at four hundred and sixty two thousand dollars and right now you're gonna find single family home prices on the market, at least as of shooting this, the market's crazy. I'm sure it'll change a little bit, but as I'm shooting this right now on the market, there are single family home prices for as low as $550,000 and then as high as 14 million, okay? And the lowest levels, most entry level townhome slash condo is only $154,000. My gut tells me there's either some strings attached there or you know potentially a very high HOA. I think to get into something more reasonable as far as the HOA goes, it's gonna cost a little bit more than that um, as far as just being like a straight up, you just buy a condo, live in it and pay HOA fees. Sometimes there are other condos that have really high HOA fees and they're almost kind of like owning an apartment that you rent for. And then the condo townhome market goes all the way up to 4 million currently. If however, you're thinking about going to the suburbs of Boulder, you can get into the suburbs for considerably cheaper than you can into Boulder proper. All right, currently on the market in Lafayette, Colorado, a suburb of Boulder, there are single family home prices as low as like 380,000. Obviously they go up into the millions as well. And then if you look at condos and townhomes in Lafayette, you can get into one of those for as low as say 250,000, at least that's what they're listed at. And then if we jump over to Longmont, you can get into a single family home, at least that's what they're priced at on the market currently for let's say 220,000. I don't think there's gonna be a ton of stock you know, at that price, but currently on the market, there are things as low as $220,000 in Longmont. And then the townhome condo game in Longmont, you can get as low as 180,000. And then if you step up from those, you can go to Louisville or Louisville. I still don't know how they actually pronounce it here in Colorado, but you can get into a single family home in Louisville for as low as $520,000. And if you wanna jump over into a condo or townhome in Louisville, Louisville, whatever, you can get into one of those for 320,000. Okay, and real quick, I'm gonna talk rentals. 
We don't exactly handle rentals, but I'm sure some of y'all are considering moving here. If you're considering renting at first, or maybe you're just gonna rent forever. According to rentdata.com, Boulder is considered what is a very high rent market. I'm sure that doesn't surprise anybody. They are in the 98th percentile of most expensive markets in the metro area. Boulder is in what I would call the 98th percentile of most expensive rental markets in the entire country, which to be honest, isn't wildly different than Denver, statistically speaking anyways. Okay, the average rent for a studio apartment in Boulder is $1,279. The average rent for a one bedroom in Boulder, Colorado is $1,428. The average rent for a two bedroom is just a little bit over $1,700. The average rent for a three bedroom is just under $2,400. And the average rent for a four bedroom is just under $2,800. If you've already watched my cost of living in Denver video, some of this stuff is basically identical because I'm using uh, statistics based on Colorado because that's literally all that is available. They don't necessarily go by market. Okay, in the rental world for the cost of utilities, and this is from numbio.com, and they use a 915 square foot average, right, or rolling average, or whatever you want to call it. The average cost of utilities for that 915 square foot average for gas, electric, water, and trash is $127 per month on the rental side of things. And the average cost of broadband internet is $60, which Really not that bad, but that's gonna be for about 60 Mbps. Okay, and then as far as homeowners go, good news, Colorado is ranked fourth lowest, fourth least expensive utilities in the country. Pretty good. My guess, very, very, very temperate weather, right? I mean, that's kind of why we're here, right? So you're not running your AC, you're not just cranking it all year round, you're not cranking your heat all year round. You gotta use both of them a little bit, but the weather is excellent. So you're not just racking up those bills all the time. And according to move.org, the average cost of utilities for homeowners is $314 per month. And that includes electric, gas, water, internet, and streaming services. I'm not exactly sure why they don't include trash or sewage or maybe they're factoring those in there, but nonetheless, $314 per month, average price for homeowners here in Colorado. And I'll dig down a little deeper. The average cost of electricity is $83 per month. The average cost of natural gas is around $50 per month. And the average cost of water is around $70 per month. Right, so not all doom and gloom. Another generally positive thing is that the median income here in Boulder is 34% higher than the rest of the United States and 14% higher than uh, Colorado as a whole. And that median income is $88,000, and I believe that's per capita, maybe that's per working person. I would assume it's per working person. Okay, and then when we talk taxes, it gets a little dicey. It's like a little hard to wrap my head around all the, the data and make it digestible. But I would say that the most important statistic that they have out there that I could find is they take the median cost right, or the median actually appraised or assessed value of a home here in Boulder, and then they apply the tax rate that you know property here is taxed on, and then we arrive at what I suppose would be the median property tax cost here in Boulder, and that's $4,900 per year, which I would say is generally quite good when we're talking a median home price of $860,000. And that's because the property tax rate in Boulder is 0.57% of the property's value. That's generally, I would say, very good. Little bit of a relief from the high cost of houses. Obviously, it doesn't make it cheap to live here, but it's something. Okay, and then one last thing on taxes, the sales tax, if you buy something from a store or whatever, and you're getting charged sales tax. The sales tax here in Boulder is 8.845. Okay, we're gonna jump over from taxes to insurance. Two of my favorite things to pay for. I don't know about you, but the website that I use to get this information about insurance costs is called thezebra.com. It's interesting. I don't know that it's exactly like a hard and fast tool, but it is interesting nonetheless to see sort of these averages. So the average cost of car insurance in Boulder is $1,631 per year, which is lower than the average cost of Colorado as a whole, but it is higher than 
the rest of the country as a whole. Colorado as a whole is right around $1,750, whereas the rest of the country as a whole is right around $1,550. So Boulder is basically right in between those two things. The average cost for renter's insurance in Boulder is $167 per year, and the average cost of homeowner's insurance is right around $2,200 per year. All right, that's pretty much all the information I can get for insurance. We're gonna hop over to transportation costs, the just average transportation costs of different things here in Boulder. I use gasbuddy.com to come up with the average uh, gallon of gas price. Gasbuddy.com, very interesting tool. As of shooting this video today, the average price of a gallon of gas in Boulder is $3.29 per gallon. One rather beautiful thing about Boulder is that the average commute time here is under 20 minutes. It's like 19 minutes. I don't know, does it get better than that? I'd like to know. And these statistics, okay, I gotta pull my phone up. These statistics, I don't know. They, don't, they aren't necessarily gonna determine how you live your life or anything, but I do find it interesting. 50% of people uh, in their commute drive their own vehicle alone. 5.6% of people carpool with other people. 12.8% work from home. I'm gonna guess that number is going way up, but 7.9% of people take mass transit. 10.4% of people ride a bicycle, and 11.3% of people walk. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so the next part of transportation I'm gonna talk about is basically mass transit, right? Or public transportation. And public transportation here in Boulder is okay. Not tremendous, you can't like take the tube, you know, to work or whatever, you can get on a bus. Okay. According to valuepenguin.com, Boulder ranks 42nd most affordable public trans... Who does? What a crazy job. So 42nd most affordable public transportation system in the country. A 30-day pass, like bus pass, is $99 per month. One thing to consider is that you can ride a bus from downtown Boulder to downtown Denver. It comes out to $5.05 if you're using the My Ride card. Okay, but if you're just hopping on a bus and we're not talking monthly passes or whatever, just a normal bus fare within Boulder is gonna cost you $3 and that's for a three hour pass. A regional pass, if you're just paying for it once, is $5.25, so again, you could get from Boulder to Denver for $5.25. Not bad. If you have to go to the airport, God help you. I don't know why our airport is so far away, but it's gonna cost you 10 bucks to get from Boulder to the airport. And maybe you just want a day pass, right? You wanna be able to hop on and off a bus and not have to have a bunch of different assortments of $1 bills. But if you just want a day pass here in Boulder, it's gonna be $6 just for a single person for a day pass. And if you're doing regional day pass, that's gonna be $10.50 per day. I don't know, maybe you have to go to the airport and then you have to go to Denver and then you have to go to Boulder. $10.50, honestly, not bad. Okay, there's also a thing called like a 10 ride or 10 fare pass. It's 28 bucks for 10 fares. So you save 20 cents a fare compared to just paying for a $3 pass. Okay, it's a fine deal, I guess. Value Penguin kind of lied. The monthly pass now is $114. Okay, I apologize. Value Penguin, a little bit off. And that $114, that's for monthly locally. If you want a monthly regional pass, maybe you're commuting back and forth to Denver all the time or for work, that's gonna be $200 per month. Okay, now we're just gonna talk about food costs. What does it cost to eat in Boulder? These statistics are fundamentally the same, if not identical, to the ones in Denver. So if you watched the Denver one already, I apologize. But I feel like I should let this video be standalone video although I do still think that you should go watch the Denver one if you haven't yet. Okay, the minimum recommended budget per person per month to get approximately 2,400 calories, and this is based on like Western food, right, is right around $290 per month. Okay, $290 per month per person for groceries as a minimum, or $9.34 per day. Let's call it 10. Huh? Let's call it 10, let's call it 300. That seems way easier. Okay, and again, I'm gonna pull out my phone because the, I, there's no way I can remember this. There's, it's gonna be really ridiculous. So I'm just gonna talk about specific food items, what they cost here in Boulder, Denver. Here are just some average prices. Okay, for one gallon of milk, the average price is 
$3.48, one loaf of white bread, $3.54, one pound of white rice, $1.37, one dozen regular eggs, $2.26, one pound of a local cheese, $3.48. One pound of chicken fillets, $3.02. One pound of beef round, $5.22. One pound of apples, $1.14. One pound of bananas, 87 cents. One pound of oranges, $2.05. One pound of tomatoes, 98 cents. One pound of potatoes, 53 cents. One pound of onions, 75 cents. One head of lettuce, $2.33. Again, Food here, not that expensive. Transportation here, not that expensive. It's all about the housing. The housing is what just really makes it pretty expensive to live here. But if you can get here, if the housing thing doesn't turn you off too bad, then your cost of living won't be that crazy. Another thing here that is not uh, wildly expensive is the healthcare costs. And I have a theory that it's because the Boulder and Denver area is one of the fittest places in the whole country. So in the same way that if an area has terrible drivers, car insurance is going to go up. If a place has really healthy people, health insurance can be more affordable. But the average cost for health insurance that a person can expect to pay in Boulder is $369 per month per person and there are three tiers in health insurance. I'm certainly no health insurance guru, but if you, the average cost of a bronze plan is gonna be right around $370. The average price of a silver plan is gonna be right around $450. And the average price of a gold plan is gonna be $550. Okay, we are almost through this. I'm getting tired. It is late, but we shall hammer through. Hardest working real estate team in the biz. According to the Economic Policy Institute, Colorado is ranked eighth highest in the nation for childcare costs. The average cost of infant care in Colorado is gonna be over $15,000 per year, whereas the average cost of childcare, and they're saying four years and up, is going to be just over $12,000 per year. Kids are not cheap. So according to the EPI, the median household with kids, childcare would take up 21% of the median income. That is very high. That's a lot to pay in terms of you know, being relative to your income, 21%. And according to the United States Department of Health and Human Services, they classify affordable healthcare as being no more than 7% of the income of a household. So, which means that we're three times higher here in Colorado than what the U.S. Department of Health and Services determines as being uh, affordable. And with that statistic, that would mean that to be considered affordable uh, in the eyes of Colorado, only 6.2% of families would be in that bracket. As in only 6% of the population here in Colorado makes enough money to pay the median cost of childcare, and that would be considered affordable. So take that for what you will. Kids are expensive, but I would also tend to think to some degree that in the same way that the median cost of home prices is brought up by the higher end of things, maybe too so is childcare, right? I'm sure there are some very extravagant childcare services out there, you know, basically like they're going to university when they can't even speak. But that is not to take away from the fact that it is in fact expensive. If you make a modest, you know, white collar wage or even less than the, you know, average income, that is going to be a pretty expensive part of your budget. Okay, now we're just gonna wrap it up with some fun stuff. The average cost of dinner, a three course dinner for two at a mid-range restaurant here in Colorado is right around $65. Public service announcement, tip your servers, tip your bartender. You can get a pint of beer for six or seven dollars here. You can get a fancy coffee, cappuccino, latte, whatever for four to five dollars. The average cost of a fitness club here in Boulder is $112 per month, which is actually pretty high. There are gonna be some more affordable ones, but the average cost is gonna be $112 per month. Fit people here, so that means a lot of people are paying that supply and demand, you know what I mean? And the average cost of a movie ticket for a single person, normal, 2D here in Boulder is $15. Obviously, if you're going to IMAX or 3D or whatever, it's gonna cost a little bit more than that. Okay, we did it. 
If you are thinking about making a move here to the front range, uh, maybe you know that from one of the other videos, maybe not. If you're thinking about moving to Boulder, Denver, anywhere in between, get a hold of us any way you can. You can call or text the number on the screen. You can email us right at info at welcome to denver.co direct line to me, you will get a hold of me that way. Or you can go to our website, welcome to denver.co. We have a section there where you can just message us directly. It'll go to that same email if I'm being honest, but it's easier, maybe, I don't know, it's up to you. Or maybe you can strap a letter to an elk and you can put my name on it really big and then maybe I'll see it, right? Maybe I'll be out in the mountains taking photos, I'll see it. That's probably not the best way to do it. Website, email, call or text. You will get a hold of us. I look forward to it very much. I look forward to helping y'all. We will crush it for you, promise. Last things last, as you exit the video, please do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get notified, give the video a thumbs up. Seriously, this was an exhausting one. And say what's up in the comments. I look forward to meeting you. Thanks guys.